seven o'clock, I'd like to call this meeting to order, please. Uh, roll call. Mayor Yanish. Here. Council Member Reese. Christensen. Here. Anderson. Here. Amon. Here. Johnson. Here. Dockin. Here. Fagerly. Here. DeBleek. Seven present, two absent. At this time, will you all stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Are there any proposed additions or deletions to the agenda? I have one thing under Ms. Lane, Mr. Mayor. Sure. We'll move into the, uh, if there are no others, we'll move into the consent agendas. Um, move to approve. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent items as they are. All those in favor say aye. Mr. Mayor, excuse me. Yes, I'm sorry. I'd like to pull the accounts payable again, please. Accounts payable. Any others? Then we'll approve the uh, consent items as is without the accounts payable and then we'll pull the accounts payable minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Uh, uh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a couple questions. I noticed there's another uh, check in here to Swenson Motor Company. Is that for another vehicle? Yes, it would be. So this would be the second one in the last month? Yeah, probably. Okay. And then Rinky Noonan, what were all those payments for? That was uh, re required for the uh, settlements on the uh, waste treatment uh, conveyance line. Uh, for the landowners out there? Yes. Um, this most recent one was the uh, settlement with the Quam properties. Five checks. Okay. And then the Ingen and Associates, I see we paid them five grand. That was for? That was for the work they did on the um, airport terminal feasibility study. They did a good job. I read that. And then one uh, last one, the uh, New Alliance Distributing. What's New Alliance Distributing for 27 grand? What was it? New Alliance distributing well he can look it up and, and get me back later too if you want for me needed check number at all that is uh, actually the uh, filling of the gas tanks at the city garage both unleaded and diesel fuel <laughs> okay that was it with that that uh, moved to approve these minutes second Motion has been made and seconded to approve the accounts payable minutes through June 15th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Uh, at this time, we'll move into the uh, scheduled hearings. Uh, I would like to open the hearing for the annual stormwater permit pollution prevention program. Holly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, and viewing public. This is our annual stormwater meeting that's required through our MS4 permit. We do this once a year to kind of review what we've done in the past, what we plan on doing in the future. And this year will be a little bit different as I'll talk about the new permit that will be coming out later this year or early next year. The purpose of the meeting tonight is to raise awareness of stormwater management. It's, as I said, it's required by our permit. And I'm going to talk about what we've done in 10, 2010, what we'll do, what we are currently doing in 2011, 
what we plan to do um, the remainder of 2011 and how the permit will be changing. This uh, meeting allows the public an opportunity to speak on comments of our stormwater pollution prevention program and how we are implementing the program. Uh, the City of Wilmer is classified as an MS4, a Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System, which basically consists of curb and gutter, manhole, swale, streets, or anything that would convey storm water. The City will um, soon be starting a new permit application, um, which we will be required to revise our stormwater pollution prevention program to meet the new permit requirements. Uh, currently, we are operating under the permit that was issued in 2006. Um, technically, it expired on May 31st, 2011, but the MPCA has not issued a permit, new permit yet, so we are still operating under the old permit. The new permit is out for public comment. It's a, under a draft form currently, and public comment is being um, taken until July 15th of this year. Once the MPCA has distributed, has release the new permit, uh, the City of Wilmer will have 150 days to um, obtain permit coverage under the new permit, which will again be effective for five years. The Stormwater Pollution Prevention Program um, addresses six minim com minimum control measures. Uh, the public outreach and education, public participation and involvement, the annual meeting does meet one of those, does meet under the public participation and involvement section of the permit. The illicit discharge and detection, construction site runoff controls, post-construction stormwater management, and pollution prevention and good, good housekeeping. The goal of the permit is to uh, create best management practices to reduce pollutants. Some of the accomplishments that were done in 2010 where we continued our outfall inspections. Under our permit, we were required to inspect 20% of all of our outfalls. Um, in 2010, we did about 120 outfalls. Uh, erosion and sediment control uh, BMPs or best management practices are distributed to builders who obtain building permits. And those include um, suggestions as far as silt fence, inlet protection, rock construction entrances, um, keeping the streets clean, and trying to uh, reduce the amount of sediment that does go down into the storm sewer. We always do review erosion control plan and a stormwater pollution prevention plan that is submitted by the developers with their plan submittal. Uh, we continued to meet with the stormwater task force, although the meetings were down in 2010. We had six meetings in 2010. Primarily that was because we were in the process of continuing our work with bar engineering on the watershed management plan and uh, waiting for results on that. So, For 2011, um, some of the things that we have done in 2011 and will continue to do throughout the year are continuing our outfall inspections. Um, 2011 starts over, so we re-inspect outfalls that we started inspecting back in 2006. Um, as you're aware, we completed the watershed management plan or have a draft final plan and we'll be completing that. Part of that will be revising our stormwater ordinance. We will need to uh, update our SWIP to meet the new requirements of the permit. Um, and we need to in increase our education efforts to not only staff and developers, but also to contractors, homeowners, and the general public. And there's always room for additional information to be added to our webpage. Some other accomplishments planned in 2011. Um, to create additional stormwater articles, uh, perform the maintenance on some of the outfalls that we have inspected and identified as needing maintenance. Uh, we need to begin assessment of the effectiveness of our ponds and wetlands. This will, you'll see as I get further along, is one of the new requirements for the new permit. Um, we also will be updating our mapping system. Uh, now I'll just highlight some of the major changes to the permit that will be issued, which is going to have an impact on uh, 
on the city and the amount of requirements that are going to be um, needing to be met. The first one is the impaired waters and TMDLs, or total maximum daily loads. The new requirement is the permit permittee will need to demonstrate progress toward meeting applicable waste load applications, which means that um, we will need to list best management practices that we are using and then applying them specifically toward reducing our waste loads. A listing activities that will lead to redu reduction in pollutant loadings. We'll need to estimate how much pollutant we feel we are going to be reducing by implementing some of these best management practices. The construction site stormwater runoff control or minimum control measure 4 as referred to in the permit uh, has been clarified for some of the program requirements. Uh, the City of Wilmer will need to develop or revise a regulatory mechanism that is at least as stringent as a construction stormwater permit. And the reason this was added is to kind of get the stormwater uh, pollution prevention program um, kind of in, in consistency with the construction stormwater permit so that there isn't confusion among contractors and con um, during construction. Um, also, we need to include requirements that establish a viable program for enforcing the uh, regulatory mechanisms that the city would need to implement. So if someone's not, not meeting the requirements that we have in our construction site, we need to come up with a, a way to enforce that, uh, maybe a more stringent way of enforcing that. Right now we send out letters and do repeat um, inspections until they are being met. Um, but I think that the MPCA is looking for a little bit more stringent requirements on that. Again, this is all preliminary and in the draft, so could change. Um, the post-construction stormwater management or minimum control never, measure five um, this was uh, looked at as to strengthening the effectiveness of the stormwater management program for reducing pollutant loads. One of the things that they talked about in there is uh, s new standards for volume, uh, rate controlled, total suspended solids and phosphorus. Um, also mitigation requirements. If a developer can't meet the requirements for re reducing total suspended solids, there would be mitigation requirements in there that they could implement best management practices on a different site but within the same watershed so that we are still um, making efforts towards reducing our pollutants. Another one would be payment in lieu to the permittee. So the developer would make a payment to the city and the city would need to implement best management control practices um, on a different site within the same watershed. So they're kind of upping the requirements for uh, post stormwater management. And also along with that would be long term maintenance requirements. Making sure that uh, once those BMPs are put into place that there is maintenance done consistently among the developer to keep those BMPs functioning um, as they should be and keeping them responsible and accountable for those best management practices. Uh, the pollution prevention and good housekeeping minimum control measure 6 Again, that was done to uh, clarify um, some of the requirements for design and implementation. Standard operating procedures would need to uh, be written and uh, followed for maintenance of structures or emergency um, repairs or, or things like that. Um, also in the permit, there would be best management practices required for municipal facilities that store for example, the public works garage that stores salt um, and those th kinds of things would need to be inspected annually versus, or excuse me, quarterly instead of annually to make sure that we're reducing our pollutant loads and doing the best that we can. Um, the storm sewer system mapping <coughs> primarily was uh, previously the last permit was specific to the illicit discharge and detection elimination control measure. Now it's um, its own requirement and Basically that's so we can keep track of all of our pipes, ditches, and swales, flow directions, and drainage areas so that we know what is going where and how much pollutants we are getting. Um, and then the pond in inventory, which the, the City of Wilmer has done a 
pond inventory um, and some of the requirements are going to be added as far as unique identification, uh, latitude and longitude location of those, the type of pond it is, the year it was built. Um, one of the big ones that probably will be time consuming is the water surface area of those ponds. What can those ponds hold? Um, who is responsible for maintaining those? Um, and the number of inlets and outlets. So some of these things we already have, it's just a little bit of additional requirements that we would need to do. And then the public education, um, public outreach, and public participation and involvement, those are minimum control measure one and two. Basically, they've removed the redundancy. In the old permit, uh, there was public education required for basically each minimum control measure. Now they have kind of broadened it and made a requirement that uh, we would choose uh, focus areas that are uh, a priority to uh, the city of Wilmer to focus on for education. Uh, may not necessarily mean that we would not have an annual meeting every year. There may be other opportunities for public involvement or participation or comments on our stormwater management plan. And then finally, the annual report uh, will be submitted after tonight's meeting and it needs to be submitted by June 30th. Uh, would we include any comments that we receive uh, from the public, written comments? Um, notifying the PCA of any changes to the SWIP, which are probably not going to happen at this time. They'll be updated when we apply for our new permit. And then we would document how many uh, people are in attendance at the, tonight's meeting. With that, I'll take any questions or comments. This is a public hearing, so this is open to the public if there are any questions. If not, I will close the public hearing. Uh, Council, what would you wish to do? Have any questions or discussion? Go ahead, Councilman Christian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Thank you uh, for this uh, report. The annual copy, uh, uh, can we get a copy of that annual report when it's done? Certainly. Um, it's basically uh, just a form that you fill out and it says kind of the things that we've done throughout the year, but sure. Yep. But as I understand it, doesn't it also uh, um, in their state something about the street sweeper and how much they're collecting? Yes, that's one of the requirements. Uh, out of the storm sewers? Yep. Um, what exactly does this permit allow us to do? I mean, you, you apply for it, you give them this sheet of paper, and then what is it? Does it say we can send water down the ditch or? No, it basically regulates uh, what, how much pollutants we can send down. I mean, they're trying to regulate the amount of sand or salt or silt or grass clippings or, you know, pet waste or whatever. So to keep our waters clean, they, it's regulating the bigger cities for their discharge that they have into the storm sewer system, trying to get it all clean water going down our storm sewer system than, than polluted water. So <coughs> do you spend an awful lot of time on that one sheet? I mean, it sounds like what this we went through here, it, it's sounds like there's a lot of stuff that's got to be done. I mean, there does is. it consume a lot of your time? Yes, it does. Um, does uh, discharging sump water into the uh, storm sewers, does that help filter the water, help us out? I mean, no. we're discharging tons of water. I mean, many, many thousand, millions of gallons. It doesn't help, but uh, this, the discharge that's coming from the sump is clean water, so it doesn't hurt us either. So it, it wouldn't help with pollutants. It doesn't help filter it out. I mean, it doesn't. Okay, well. Grass swales, um, you know, riprap, those types of things help kind of filter the water that goes through mm -hmm. or down the storm sewers. Um, back to the street sweeper part of this. Um, that, that's required for this MS4 permit, correct? Yeah, that's one of the one of the um, best management practices that a city can choose to use as okay. reducing pollutants. I've been doing some uh, part-time investigating uh, street sweepers, and um, I've read the EPA reports on them. And uh, there's three types. One is the Pelican, which we have, which are brushes. Mm -hmm. There's a vacuum sweeper, and there's a, one called a regenerative air sweeper, so it doesn't go back into the air outside of the cab or the uh, truck. And the EPA said that that is the best one to use for cleaning up uh, microparticles. 
Mm -hmm. um, they say that the one that we have, the sweeper one, breaks those particles up and spreads them out, makes things worse. Um, and I'd be happy to share that with you mm -hmm. sometime during the week. Sure. That was it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Dawkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Holly. Uh, the meeting of the 20th, uh, where is that going to be held? The, that's, oh, that's, I mean, that's today. I'm sorry, that's, sorry. That, that's the meeting for tonight, but no, yes. when are you going to have another meeting then? This is the requirement that we would have for an annual meeting, so there wouldn't be, there's not another meeting scheduled. Okay, have we, or have, have, has your office uh, coordinated this with like the Stormwater Task Force, uh, <coughs> uh, Bar Engineering's interest in this, uh, Candy High County and the folks that really uh, are partners with us in this, are, are they going to be able to weigh in on this? There was a public notice sent out prior to the meeting, yes. But are we going to actively try to put together a group just to talk about it uh, after this meeting? Uh, we, we have 150 days. That's 150 days from today? No. That's 150 days from the date that the MPCA releases the permit, which they are still in. It is still in draft form, still accepting public comment. It could be the latest I saw was the new permit wouldn't come out till the end of the year. So At the end of this year? 120, 150 days from the date that the permit is issued. And they scatter that among different cities. Some cities have 60 days. Some six cities have 90 days. Wilmer has 150 days. And there's a list of those okay. um, in the permit. Well, I would really think that, uh, you know, the Stormwater Task Force and if Bar Engineering wants to, I know that we, we can't direct them to do that, but the Planning Commission members, the, the Council members, and uh, maybe even some from Candy Eye County would probably want to be a part of this. I mean, if we're going to develop a document that, uh, um, that's just my thoughts. What would be the procedure for that? The, uh, uh, the document, the SWIP has already been developed. It was developed in 2006 uh, when we applied for the first permit. And the la meeting that I attended on Thursday is that the SWIP wouldn't need to be totally rewritten. A lot of it can be reused and just maybe added or changed a little bit. So, it seems to me that that the bar engineering report touched on many of these that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other council on? Just one question. <coughs> Thank you, Holly. Um, I have a question for regarding the PCA. Do they uh, address, you mentioned uh, construction runoff from job sites, excess dirt, run into our st uh, stormwater. Um, do they address or have they ever addressed the issue of uh, agricultural waste or runoff from agricultural sites? And is that ever going to be addressed or do we need to address that in any form or fashion? I can't think that it's specifically addressed in this particular permit or in the construction stormwater permit. I'm not familiar with their egg side of things, but so I guess I can't really answer that question. I can I can find out, but well, it, it, their their PCA seems to be quick on enforcing uh, the erosion of dirt, and, and, but we were not addre addressing the issue of the chemicals and the waste coming off of the fields. And I'm just curious. You know, do we have waste coming off the fields that uh, are adjacent to the property line, or the property of the borders of the city of Wilmer, mm -hmm. actually drain into our stormwater? And I, I would think the answer to that would be yes. And uh, whether or not that affects us or not, <coughs> to what degree, I'm not sure. But uh, I, I'm just curious. If you I'll do some checking on that. I'll talk to you later about it. Thank you. Sure. Councilman Pegerly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Holly. My question's on salt storage. Do we store our own for yes. the winter? Do we share with the county, too, at some I don't point? I we do, because the, ours is on the west end of town. Theirs is north. And so we do interchange. OK. So do we have to inspect their stockpile, too, and the state out at the field? My understanding is this permit would just be requiring municipal min municipalities to inspect their own storage facilities. Okay. Thanks. Any further questions? Discussion? I have one related question, Holly. Mm -hmm. Are grass clippings an issue with uh, the stormwater system? Yes. 
Okay. The reason I ask is because as I travel the city, I see so many people blowing their grass clippings into the street. Now, is there an ordinance against that? Yeah, they're not supposed to do that. And, and we try to remind them that they're not supposed to do that. And I think you'll see that um, as time goes on, the public education piece needs to be uh, uh, beefed up a little bit as far as uh, letting the public know what is acceptable and what is not for stormwater pollution. That's something that is one of my goals for this next permit. Any other questions? Um, do we need a motion or anything? I don't believe any action is required, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Holly. Thank you. Appreciate it. At this time, we will uh, move into the uh, City Council Open Forum. Is there anyone scheduled to speak? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Sullivan? Same old, same old. I apologize for doing this so much, but I being, I'm a citizen of Wilmer. My name is John Sullivan. 508 Southeast 13th Street, Wilmer. I believe the citizens have the right to speak before the council. Um, I know you get tired of me, but uh, I think most of you know that I study my subject very well, and I feel I'm fairly well versed on them. I may not know everything, but I also have opinions. I'm here tonight to talk on the tenure pack at the email that I wrote I want to thank Doug Reese for inserting it into the minutes on the last public work meeting, and it is included in your packet. My objection to the new liquor ordinance as it is written. And the reason I feel that is because many, many years ago, back in South Dakota, my wife and I worked in that business. Uh, I was a bartender for a while. We both kind of sub managed a liquor store for a while, so I know how that work with uh, underage people. I think the ordinance needed to be rewritten. It should have been done a year ago. It just got left by side until now somebody gets their third violation, so all of a sudden, hey, we better get this done. And I think it was done a little quick, a little without a lot of thought. And I agree with the main principle that you did is that you got rid of the closings. I agree with that 100%. These businesses should not be closed down. But to only increase the fine by $500, I think it's a detriment to the principle of why they do this. I'd hate to think, thinking back, we had one with the third violation this time. They only do that once every six months. How many violations were there in that six-month period? You don't know. Uh, I bet if they checked them every other night, they'd probably run into some. So it's not just a one-time deal. It's something that happens. And the comment that uh, you shouldn't find a business because of its employees' mistakes, I don't agree with that because I know there's three of you here that are independent businessmen. And if your employee makes an error in doing something, you're responsible. Your insurance is going to pay for that. And uh, your insurance premiums are going to go up considerably. And if you have three of these black violations in three years, you'll probably be canceled. So the business is responsible. It's not just a, it's probably an honest mistake, yes. But the business has got to own up to it. And uh, I believe the fines should be increased proportionately, as I stated in my email, to the first violation should appear before the council, not a committee. So they have to stand right where I'm standing and tell you why they did it and what they're going to do not to do it again. The second violation, fine should be 2500 The third, 3500 The fourth violation, 5000 And the fifth violation, a revocation of license period, uh, especially if you go to the three-year deal. If they have five violations in three years, wow, there's something going on with that business. And it should be re revoked right away. On the three-year deal, I don't agree with that. I think it should be left at five years. 
and uh, going down the line there on section D, I think that's okay, but uh, the full council must take action for an increased fine as soon as possible because they have to pay these within 10 days or 10 days after a hearing. So the council has to get in there and act on that right away. And sometimes you're not able to. So if you want to increase the fine, I think that should be somehow rewarded. rewarded. And uh, the last one, the H, I think is a very good addition to the ordinance. I think it's very important uh, but that all bartenders, uh, bar hop, waitresses, should be trained, uh, have to be trained, but there's nothing in that paragraph that tells anybody how they do, I mean, what they do for it. You don't know if XYZ was hired yesterday or three months ago. You don't know. So I think there should be some method there if you're going to have that paragraph so that the employer notified the chief of police that Jane Doe was hired on March 1st and he writes it down, and if that Jane Doe hasn't had training within 90 days, then uh, he better go talk to that employer. There's something amiss. So other than that, I think it's a very good timing on it. I think the, I fully agree with the closing down. Because if the, the business is out of here, if an employee makes a mistake and you have an insurance claim on it, you don't have to close down. You can keep working. But that fire, that person that did the damage or, or whatever you did wrong may not have a job tomorrow. Or he may. So it's up to the employer. So I don't think it's an automatic violation for being fired, but the employer does have responsibility. And what I'm here to recommend tonight is that you table this issue, rethink it, rewrite it, and uh, put some more thought into it. Thank you. And the only other thing I do want to have to say is I think the council as a whole should review their Data Practices Act, what your policy is or isn't. Uh, it's not being handled properly. So with that, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, John. Anyone else care to speak? If now that I'll close the public forum. Uh, that, uh, Mr. Okins, the uh, department head for the de finance department. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, fellow city staff members, the general public, and those that may be watching on Rack 8. Um, I guess I'm the final uh, department director to give his report. I don't know if they saved the best for last. I don't think so, but um, <laughs> uh, here I am tonight. And uh, you have in front of you a packet. Uh, it's maybe a little different than what some people might be expecting. Um, I'm not going to uh, bore you with a bunch of numbers tonight. There's a few numbers in there, but I'm basically going to just kind of describe what our office does and who is involved in, in doing in those functions. You'll see the very first page there and up on the screen a list of the employees in the finance department. Um, you may not notice the very last person on there, Crystal Scott. She was uh, married this year and so her name changed. Uh, her name was Chris Crystal Wallaber. Uh, she just uh, celebrated her second uh, year anniversary with us here a couple weeks ago. So um, I do have to compliment them publicly on the work they do. Uh, we've had a couple of large projects in the last few years uh, on the airport and the waste treatment plant. Major projects with a, a lot of additional work that was involved in that and uh, they've stepped up to the plate. Uh, we've had a couple uh, leaves of absence and we've covered those vacancies uh, in-house and we've had a temporary uh, this year but uh, uh, those large projects they've stepped up to the plate and did a lot of additional work. On the next page, you'll see the uh, the three major functions that our office handles: uh, the financial re recording and reporting. Um, we uh, are entrusted in uh, reviewing city policy, 
Uh, if departments are in compliance, we review that uh, banking reconciliation review not only with uh, city clerk's office, but also with the uh, component units of Rice Hospital and the municipal utilities. Um, we do budget recording and compliance. That's basically the map of where we're going. Uh, and the financial report at the end of the year is basically how well did we do and where are we at at the end of the year. Uh, labor contracts and payroll compliance. Uh, we have basically six contracts that uh, we uh, deal with, all the city employees. Um, 2010, uh, we did have contracts in place. Uh, so far this year, uh, there are none that are settled. Um, it does uh, potentially create additional workload for our staff in that uh, if there may be any kind of back pay or any kind of uh, changes that would be retroactive, we would have to go back and, and review those and see who may have qualified and who may not have qualified. Uh, we've had a lot of vacancies, uh, um, position vacancies, and so we track those. Uh, we track budgetary changes and anything that uh, uh, might happen there. We've had some promotions with those vacancies, so we make sure that we uh, communicate with all the employees and, and uh, comply with all the uh, labor contracts that we have. The next page is basically uh, uh, report setting organizations. These are organizations that we are required to follow. Uh, basically from the top down are the, are the governing agencies where the city charter is basically the last item that, that we are required. Everything that may be contradictory to the other ones that may be in the city charter, we would make a recommendation that uh, in order to be in compliance with these other governmental uh, accounting standards or uh, Institute of Certified Public Accountants that we would make recommendations that these uh, charter requirements would be changed. Um, again, I mentioned that our office is basically the, the office that's dealing directly with the, the main governmental unit, the general government of the city. We do have com two component units of Rice Hospital and Wilmer Municipal Utilities. Uh, we do incorporate those, their numbers. They do communicate with our office as far as compliance on bond issues, maybe communicating and coordinating bond issues and those types of things. Um, the city general government basically has got a quarter of a billion dollars in assets that we deal with. Uh, a lot of that has been added at the two projects that I mentioned with uh, about $80 million on the waste treatment plant and, and over $20 million on a new airport. Um, we basically have $14 million in the general operating fund balance. Those are all uh, based on past council proceedings and, and procedures dedicated or designated. And I'll talk a little bit about that further on in my presentation about those designations and new change in terminology. Uh, Rice Hospital has basically 121 million in assets and the utilities about 54 million in assets. The uh, general government basically is classified into a number of different areas and this is, is dictated by the actions the council wants to take. Uh, the general operating, of course, is the one that covers all the activities that would not be classified in any of the other categories. Uh, the special revenue funds uh, are ones that are either uh, dictated internally or externally by uh, law, either by the council or by external forces, uh, state statutes, or those types of items, and I'll talk a little bit about that further on in the presentation. The capital projects, I mentioned the waste treatment in the airport. Debt service funds are, are also uh, detailed later on. That's all the uh, debt. We basically issued about $160 million worth of debt in the last 10 years. Um, all that is covered. Um, we, uh, again, I have a slide further on. And the other ones there, the general fixed assets, I talked about uh, a quarter of a billion dollars in assets for just the city proper alone, along with the hospital and utilities, and then the long-term debt that's associated with that. The general government basically are uh, into four categories and we talk about this in our budgeting process and that's where a lot of the discussion about where are we at, where have we been, where are we at, and where are we going, uh, where, we, where, we were, where we've been are, are pretty standard, pretty cut and dried. It's historical data that we provide to the council. Where are we at today with the potential state shutdown? Uh, and uh, possible LGA cuts. There could be a question mark there. Where we're going to go from here in 2012, again, uh, with this possible state shutdown is, uh, is uncertain at this point. Um, but these four categories are broken down into the, the general uh, government portion. 
The special revenue funds, again, I mentioned that these are internally and externally restricted uh, programs, either by choice of the council or by external forces. The Economic Development Revolving Fund, uh, the council has just taken action on that this year. At the end of the year of last year, that was the deed grant that the, the council had gotten for the Wilmer Fabrication Project. And so there's been some activity in that account since the end of the year. The Industrial Development Fund was uh, the fund that was developed uh, with the old industrial park. It was uh, pretty much depleted and instrumental in the relocation of the airport project as far as the city portion along with all the grants from the state and federal government. Uh, the access channel rack 8 has uh, uh, been uh, designated by the council. It's not uh, uh, restricted by any law or statute and that uh, is uh, franchise fee uh, from the two cable companies. Convention and Visitors Bureau is a lodging tax. That is by statute uh, obligated. Uh, the local option sales tax, uh, again, will expire at the end of, of next year. Uh, the Community Investment Fund is what the council has used to uh, offset their share of the street replacement program. The capital project funds, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. are kind of driven by the five-year capital improvement program, uh, reviewed by the Planning Commission and sent to uh, the council during the budgeting process. The systematic e equipment replacement program also is reviewed by staff and, and as part of the budgeting process. Uh, the 10-year street re improvement program, uh, $2 million a year basically is what we look at and try to target. Uh, again, that's a combination of bond <laughs> funds paid by special assessments and uh, state aid monies. And then you also see there the waste treatment relocation airport I mentioned uh, earlier. Debt service funds, uh, I mentioned that we had issued about $160 million in debt over the last 10 years. A lot of that is primarily attributable to these debt, debt services of uh, the uh, street program, Rice Hospital uh, renovation uh, a few years back, uh, the utilities, which would include the wind turbines, uh, tax increment programs, which are self-supporting. They're very small in, in nature compared to the entire picture, the airport and the waste treatment plant. Uh, enterprise and component units, uh, the waste treatment plant is basically, as well as Rice Hospital and the Wilmer Municipal Utilities, considered enterprise funds. They are classified as a business and orientated uh, function and that's uh, the way the rates and uh, operations are uh, set. Uh, they're to be run like a business and the, and the fees and, and uh, services are to pay for those services. Internal service funds are, are only a small group of funds that we use internally to cost share uh, office supplies and to temporarily fund uh, street improvement programs until we are able to sell bonds. The trust and agency funds, you'll see uh, a few of those there that we act as uh, agent for Selvig Park. There was a $30,000 donation given a number of years back where the interest from that is used to cover the maintenance cost. Uh, on the Selvig Park, which is located in the same block as Race Hospital. Library Improvement Reserve, there was about $200,000 left there at the end of 2010. Uh, that was excess money that uh, w was there after the debt for the uh, library project was uh, completed. And Rice Memorial Hospital, we act as an agent for their debt service. Uh, component units I mentioned earlier, those are the departments within those units. Uh, Rice Hospital as the hospital uh, general, the uh, Rice Home Medical and Rice Care Center, and the utilities have the electric, water, and heating divisions. Joint powers agreements, we do work with other organizations uh, outside of the city on joint powers agreements. Uh, the main one there is the EDC, or the Economic Development Authority, uh, with Candyway County. Uh, we have the uh, Transit, uh, also with Candyway County, the Community Education and Rec, and the Pioneer Land Library System actually is a joint powers agreement with a number of uh, communities and counties. Um, financial conditions, uh, a lot of people uh, when they talk about how much uh, money do you have or how much uh, is there available to be spent, there are really two classifications that I like to differentiate between, that is the investments and the fund balance. The investments are actually cash in the bank that you have, the fund balance may be uh, your assets less whatever you owe on, on uh, uh, payables, bond, those types of things and there is a distinct difference between the two. This is where the fund balance and the governing authorities that we're getting, uh, we're getting uh, from the Governmental Accounting Standards Board um, a ruling that by 2012 
the city of Wilmer will have to change our terminology on the fund balance section. You'll see there, <coughs> excuse me, the present terminology of reserved or unreserved. The reserved meaning that there are some legal obligations for those accounts and that there is no uh, other usage that can be allowed for that. Unreserved, there's a, a breakdown between designated and undesignated. Uh, the city of Wilmer has all our, of our unreserved dollars designated by the fund balance policy and procedures that the council has enacted in the past. Some of those being a cash flow reserve which will help us in the possible shutdown of the state. Uh, uh, insurance reserve and, and the emergency appropriations which is authorized in the, in the um, charter. The new terminology that you see up there um, is a little bit maybe more explan explanatory. Um, somebody in their infinite wisdom decided that we needed to change it so that it was maybe e more easily explainable, assigned. Uh, basically is the same thing as being a, de a designated fund balance. So you'll see most of all of the designated balances that we have will fall into the assigned category. The non-spendable is basically a reserved. That's next few pages are just basically, again, explanations of those terminologies. The cash and investments that the city has, for those that uh, paid attention to Mr. Halliday's report, and uh, remember the, the investment balance that he gave that, uh, that he handles. His number was $51 million. You'll see my number is 47. Where did $4 million go, you may say? It's down into the Rice Memorial Hospital. And that's about what we handle for them on their tr on their, as their agent for the debt service. But as we bring those two component units in with the city numbers, we have to move those numbers out of the city area into the component unit because they're really Rice Hospitals. And so when we consolidate their financial report with our financial report, you'll see that difference in maybe cash and investment numbers from what the city clerk had reported. Here's a, the following page, page 20, is a breakdown of the classification by fund categories that I just explained of the $47 million. Again, the general fund is 13, roughly $14 million. Uh, special revenue funds, which are restricted. Again, uh, the big portion of that is for the community investment fund. Uh, debt service funds are, are, are totally obligated for the re repayment of debt. Capital project funds, uh, again, in transit, some of them are for the waste treatment plant. Um, and the other ones are, are on there. I mentioned the uh, last 10 years and uh, a small breakdown on page 21 of what that uh, 160 million in debt relates to. Um, even during that time, and we will have a scheduled uh, discussion with uh, Moody's, the rating agency, later on this week on our 2011 <coughs> street improvement program. Uh, we've been not only been able to maintain our bond rating, but we've actually had two improvements in that same time frame. Uh, the last page that you see there is basically a historical uh, trend on the, uh, on the tax rate. Uh, a lot of that is attributable to increased growth, new construction, and those types of, of items. With that, Mr. Mayor, I would be more than happy to answer any questions that anybody may have. Other questions from the council? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Steve, for an excellent report. I'm just curious as to who, who really decided to change the uh, uh, terminology. I mean, who, who's the guy down at St. Paul that, that uh, has all this time to think about changing this? Well, the Government Accounting and Standards Board is really kind of a conglomerate of a number of different organizations from bond rating agencies to CPAs to uh, anybody in the profession. You mean there's more than one guy that did it? There's a board down there that says we're going to change the terminology? It's a, it's a national organization, yes. Do you think it's a good step to, to change the terminology? I mean, if it, if it makes it easier for people to understand it who aren't bean counters like myself, yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Councilman Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Steve. Um, I just want to say thanks to the finance department. I work with them quite a bit, and this is a big business. I mean, you talk about a quarter billion dollars in uh, in assets and and fourteen million dollar operating budget. This is a big deal, and and we've got four dedicated people. I don't think that there's many things. I like think there's no things that slip between the cracks. So I. I just uh, compliments to the finance department and the director. Thank you. Thank you.
Any questions or comments? Just, just one. Uh, Mr. Bean counter opens. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've always appreciated your work and the years experience you've had to the city of Wilmer. It's really an asset, and I'm sure your staff is too. Is there anything that we're, uh, as far as the council is, is considered the mayor, is there anything in your department right now that uh, we're failing or lacking in? that might assist um, an ease of ease of workload or uh, technology? I, I don't believe so. I think once we get past these two projects, as I mentioned, the airport project's been going on for 16 years. I went back in 1995 was the first year when the council decided to relocate the airport. A uh, number of grants. We have a meeting tomorrow. <coughs> if we can get that done and out of the way, the uh, the waste treatment plant has caused some delays in, in some getting out some of the, the the numbers for 2010 just to the magnitude of the the asset the number of depreciation and those types of things we get those large projects out of the way uh, um, and if we can get some contract settlements we should be good okay, thank you thank you Steve appreciate it With that, we will move into the uh, Finance Committee report for June 13th. Uh, Councilman Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First agenda item was the MUC public hearing for a proposed rate increase. The uh, MUC General Manager, GOM, informed us that the MUC had held, had held a public hearing earlier that day regarding a two-step proposal to increase electricity rates by 7% each in July of 2011 in January 2012. He discussed projected budgets for 2011 and 12 and noted that capital expenditures had been deferred as long as possible unless it was a, a safety issue. Beginning last year, there was a substantial increase in costs of transmission charges through Great River <coughs> Energy, and that's a major factor driving the proposed rate increases. Uh, he also provided some rate comparisons with other cities. Following discussion, there was a motion made second and passed, and I would move the recommendation of the committee to introduce an ordinance amending the current electricity rates and set a public hearing for July 5th, 2011. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to uh, set a uh, public hearing to introduce an ordinance amending the current electricity rates for July 5th. Is there any discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion carries. The public hearing will be set for July 5th. Uh, the second item uh, had to do with the Legion Services budget. Finance Director Okins informed us that we had, the city has received a donation of $500 and that came from the Convention and Visitors, Visitors Bureau. And that's to assist with expenses related to men's softball and co rec volleyball tournaments uh, that will be held during Wilmerfest. Staff is requesting the 2011 uh, leisure services budget be amended to reflect this increase in revenue. Following discussion, there was a motion made second and passed, and I'll be introducing two resolutions. The first one is to accept the donation of $500 from the Convention and Visitors Bureau and send a letter of appreciation. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to introduce a resolution um, to accept the donation of $500 from the Convention and Visitors Bureau and to set a, send a letter of appreciation. Roll call. Council Member Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Baggerly. Aye. Six ayes, zero noes. The motion carries. The, the second resolution that I would introduce is amending the 2011 Leisure Services budget with the $500 revenue increase. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce a resolution amending the 2011 Leisure Services budget with the $500 revenue increase. Discussion. Roll call. Council Member Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Baggerly. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Six A's, zero no's. That motion carries. 
The next item uh, was a state auditor letter, auditor letter from June 1st. Staff provided us with uh, copies of the state auditor's letter dated June 1st, 2011, notifying cities and counties that they may participate in the standards measures program, which could provide a reimbursement of 14 cents per capita in local government aid and an exemption from levy limits, levy limits under sections 275.70 to 275.74 for taxes payable in 2012. Based on the latest census, that would mean Wilmer would receive uh, $2,678.20 for that effort. There was no recommendation uh, from staff. We had a discussion and we took the matter for information pending uh, what staff may have found out at the league conference. And it's my understanding that there was no great revelation developed from the league conference. So uh, this will be received for information. And then staff also provided uh, copies of the state's letter dated June 10th, 2011 advising contractors, vendors, and grantees of the possible state government shutdown as of July 1st. Uh, and I think there have been continuing letters and more letters going out uh, in, in the same vein from the state. That was for information only. The uh, fourth item has to do with an RV dump station. Staff explained to us that an RV dump station is being proposed to be installed at the Candy Oye County Recycling Center with a preliminary cost estimate of $14,000. The county has agreed to participate in this venture by providing the area to construct the station. City Attorney Ronning will be drafting a memorandum of understanding our land agreement for this purpose. Funding for the project is proposed to be taken from the 2011 Waste Treatment Plant Municipal Collections Capital Expenditures Budget. Originally, $476,000 was budgeted in 2011 for the uh, Orton Bladen Arby's lift station project, but those funds are no longer needed as the project has now been included in Project B of the new wastewater treatment plan. Following discussion, there was a motion made second in the past, and I would introduce a resolution approving the RV dump station project to be installed at the Candy Oye County Recycling Center and utilize $14,000 from the Waste Treatment Plant Municipal Collections Capital Expenditures Budget for this project. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce the resolution approving the RV dump station project to be installed <coughs> at the Candy Ohio County Recycling Center and to utilize $14,000 from the Wilmer Treatment uh, Center to the uh, Municipal Collections Capital Expenditure Expenditures Budget for this project. Discussion. I have a question for Mr. Okins. Um, as I read this, I'm taking this to understand that $476,000 that we didn't use, and we're taking 14,000 from that 476,000. That's correct. The remaining amount will go into available balances to be budgeted in future years for the waste treatment plant. Any other questions, comments? Council Manama? I uh, was at the meeting, but is that's being put out in public bid to do perform this work soon after we approve this, or is it? do we already have estimates for the project? We already have quotes. You do? Okay. Sealed bids. Quotes? Oh, we don't have them? Uh, we got one quote. We? Okay. The estimate that we have is an estimate that the engineering department put together. Once we get the agreement, uh, which I got from the city attorney tonight, uh, we'll have Candy Ohio County review that and then we'll go out for quotes for the project. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Baggerly. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Six eyes, zero no's. The motion carries. The uh, next item has to do with excess liability insurance. Um, staff presented details of the current statutory tort liability limits to the extent of the coverage purchased from the League of Minnesota Sh Cities Insurance Trust. Uh, a decision must be made annually whether or not to waive these limits. So this is something that we talk about every year. 
If the city does not waive the statutory tort limits, an individual claimant would be able to recover no, no more than $500,000 on any claim to which the statutory tort limits apply. The total which all claimants would be able to recover in a single occurrence to which is those statutory tort limits apply would be limited to a million and a half dollars. The city waives the statutory tort limits and per if if the city waives the statutory tort limits and purchases excess liability coverage, a single claimant could potentially recover an amount up to the limit of the coverage purchased. The total which all claimants would be able to recover for a single occurrence to which the statutory tort limits apply would be limited to the amount of per coverage purchased, regardless of the number of claimants. Uh, staff was recommending not to waive the statutory tort limits at this time, and that's what we've done in the past. <coughs> Before I move the recommendation of the committee, I have a question. In one place I'm seeing resolution, another place I'm stating motion. Is this a resolution? This is a resolution. Yes, we have a resolution. It's a resolution. Okay, thank you. Then I would move the recommendation of the committee and introduce a resolution stating that the city will not waive the statutory tort limits. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to uh, introduce a resolution stating the city will not waive the statutory tort limits. Discussion. Roll call. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Baggerly. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Six eyes, zero no's. That motion carries. The sixth item on our agenda had to do with the uh, police department budget amendment due to health insurance. Staff explained to us that another employee in the police department requires a change in health insurance coverage from single to family. As a result, the budget can be amended by decreasing salaries and increasing insurance by $5,100. The decrease in salaries is possible due to a patrol officer position that we haven't filled. Following discussion, uh, there was a motion made second and passed and I would introduce a resolution amending the police department budget by decreasing salaries and increasing insurance in the amount of $5,100. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce a resolution amending the police department budget by decreasing salaries and increasing the insurance in the amount of $5,100. Discussion? Councilman questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, what does it mean to, to decrease the salaries? The line item for salaries would be nope. reduced and the line item for insurance is increased by a like amount. Um, so when we, we reduce the line item of salaries, does that, does that mean this fellow is getting that much less money but we're giving it back to him in insurance? No, it means that we have uh, money in the salary line item because we had two vacant positions in 2000. And okay, so there's some excess money in there to cover this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, I, I know it's in their contract, but, but I still look at this as a raise. I mean, the guy's getting a raise with a gal, whoever it is. It, it's 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 a fifty-one hundred dollar raise, and uh, you know we weren't going to have any uh, increases in uh, salaries. But I know it's contract, and just wanted to make that statement. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call. Council Member Dockin. Aye. Baggerly. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Anderson? Aye. Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Six ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. The next item were some reports. Uh, we received the uh, May 31st uh, local option sales tax, convention and visitors bureaus, and Rack 8 reports. That was for information only. Our final item was uh, had to do with future agenda items, and finance director reviewed some items that will be coming to us. I think the first item that you see there will not be coming to us. That was a public works, public safety thing. There will be a waste treatment rate discussion, public works reserve fund, uh, fund balance policy, and capital improvement policy. That was for information only. Unless there's questions, I would move to file these minutes. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the Finance Committee. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 
Those opposed say no. That motion carries. With that uh, being completed, we'll move into the Public Works Safety Committee uh, report for June 14th. Uh, Mr. Christensen, Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Bear with me, this is a very long report. There's 14 items on here, and everyone's got a motion, and some have two. Um, item number one had to do with the liquor ordinance revision. Uh, two council members uh, met with our city clerk to review proposed uh, revisions to the liquor ordinance, specifically in relation to uh, penalties placed on establishments who fail compliance checks. Uh, they referred this item to the committee for consideration. Uh, our chairman read into a record a, an email from a woman resident who spoke earlier, Mr. John Sullivan. He pretty much explained his email to us. Uh, the committee then discussed the monetary level suggested for each violation and the removal of the suspension of the establishment's license. Um, after some discussion, a motion was made, seconded, and passed for the following, and I would uh, make the recommendation to introduce the ordinance for a hearing on July 5th, 2011. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce the ordinance for a hearing on July 5th, 2011. Is there any discussion? Councilman Christians. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just uh, want to add that for the viewing public, if they would like to read this, I believe it's going to be online. Is that correct? It will be on our website so they can uh, review these changes before the hearing. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. I might uh, ask Audrey and Mick uh, is this a resolution or a Motion. No, it's a motion. A motion. motion. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number two was the uh, presentation of uh, uh, some more improvement reports. Uh, our public works director presented the improvement report for 12th Street Southwest, uh, named 1112. The area proposed for reconstruction is from Becker Avenue Southwest to Trot Avenue Southwest, and it would be funded through our PIR and uh, reimbursed in 2012 at an estimated cost of $112,949.21. The uh, assessment amount is estimated to be $32,868. Uh, after some discussion, a motion was made, seconded it passed for the following. And I will introduce the resolution to receive the preliminary report for project number 1112, an order and improvement hearing for July 5th, 2011 at 7.05 p.m. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce the uh, resolution for the preliminary report for project number 1112, an order and improvement hearing for July 5th, 2011 at 7.05 p.m. Discussion. Roll call. Councilmember Fagerly? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Six ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. Once again, our Public Works Director presented an improvement report for various streets to be added to the current contract for project number 1101 with uh, Dunnick Incorporated by means of a change order and known as project number 1101-12. These streets are being added as they are deemed beyond patching repair. The uh, streets being added are detailed in the improvement report for a total cost of uh, $499,644.18, an assessable cost at $283,660.40. Uh, motion was made, seconded to pass for the following, and I will introduce the resolution that we receive the preliminary report for project number 1101-12 and order an improvement hearing for July 5th, 2011 at 7.06 p.m. Second. Check. A motion has been made and seconded to receive the preliminary report for the project number 1101-12 and order an improvement hearing for July 5th, 2011 at 7.06 p.m. Discussion. <coughs> Roll call. Council Member Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Daggerly? Aye. Six ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. Item number three had to do with the consideration of a grant from Homeland Security. Uh, our fire chief, 
presented information relating to needed repairs for the uh, decontamination trailer, which is housed by the fire department. Um, the department is uh, requesting permission to proceed with the repairs totaling $10,600 to be completed by Pro Trainer. The costs are eligible for reimbursement to the city through a grant process with Homeland Security Emergency Management. Staff had requested permission to proceed with repairs apply for and accept the grant dollars. Uh, no local dollars will be required. A motion was made, seconded to pass for the following, and I will induce the resolution. To grant permission to repair the trailer with city funds <coughs> and apply for and accept grant money for all costs incurred through Homeland Security. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to grant permission to repair the trailer with city funds and apply for and accept grant money for all costs incurred through Homeland Security. Discussion. Councilman Amon. Um, Pro Trainer is who? The contractor that's going to be doing performing the work? All right. I believe so. Yes. And, Pro and Trainer they're is, a is specialty is. company? Yeah. Okay. So that work is, is so going to be sublet to someplace out of town? Yes, it's in agreement with Homeland Security Emergency Management. There's uh, 15 of these units throughout the state. And this particular company out of Alexandria is doing repairs on eight of the trailers. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Anderson? Aye. Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Baggerly? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Six eyes, zero noes. That motion carries. <laughs> Item number four was to consider acceptance of a donation to the fire department. Um, once again, our fire chief presented a request to accept $1,000 from Pioneer Hybrid Foundation for use by the city's fire department in support of the purchase of a grain bin rescue tube. The uh, cost of the tube is $961.88. A motion is made, seconded to pass for the following, and I will introduce the resolution to accept the donation of $1,000, adjust the fire department's budget accordingly, to be used toward the purchase of that green bin rescue tube and acknowledge its receipt by a letter. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to accept the donation of $1,000 and adjust the fire department's budget accordingly to be used towards the purchase of a green bin rescue tube and acknowledge its receipt by letter. Discussion. Councilman Allen. Are, are there other uh, community fire departments that have this type of facility or this type of equipment also, or are we the only one that will, will have this now? Or is it replacing the existing that we have? And we're the only ones in Candy Lake County that would have this equipment. Again, our technical rescue team would use this equipment. Our technical rescue team is made up of members of the Wilmer Ambulance Service, the Candy Lake County Rescue Squad, and the fire department will be used jointly by those three entities. All three of the entities were consulted on its purchase prior to purchasing it. And to my knowledge, the closest one to us of a similar make and design would be down in Maynard. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call. Councilman Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Baggerly? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Six eyes, zero noes. Item number five was uh, the consideration of engineering services agreement for uh, County Road number 55. Um, our public works director presented a scope of services from Donahue and Associates for preliminary design of a sanitary sewer collector pipe that would collect the wastewater from the proposed future sewer service area of current businesses along County Road 55 on the west side of the city for a not to exceed figure of $5,280. Existing businesses in the area have expressed an interest for the project that will connect to the western, the proposed western interceptor sewer project. Uh, Donahue's proposal includes three alignments and preparation of cost estimates. Uh, the committee discussed that agreement, and a motion was made, seconded it passed for the following, and I will introduce the resolution to approve the agreement for engineering services for a not to exceed amount of $5,280, and authorize our city administrator to sign on behalf of the city. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the agreement for engineering services for a not to exceed amount of $5,280 and authorize the city administrator to sign on behalf of the city. 
Discussion? Roll call. Council Member Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Baggerly? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Amen? Aye. Six ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. Item number six was the consideration of proposal for flood risk assessment feasibility study. A proposal for a uh, flood risk assessment, assessment feasibility study prepared by Bar Engineering was presented to our committee for discussion and information. The uh, study would address key mitigation strategies for some of the key flooding areas identified within the city's draft watershed management plan. The total cost of the study uh, was $88,040. After some uh, discussion, a motion was made, seconded and passed for the following. And I will introduce the motion that we refer the proposal for a flood risk assessment feasibility study to the Stormwater Task Force for recommendation. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to refer the proposal for a flood risk assessment feasibility study to the Stormwater Task Force for recommendation. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. That motion carries. Just about halfway through. <laughs> Item number seven. Consideration of Bureau of Criminal Apprehensive Apprehension Joint Powers Agreement. Um, our chief police uh, presented an agreement with the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, the BCA, to continue access to state criminal justice data maintained by the BCA. Our city attorney reviewed the information and expressed concern regarding section 2.11 the requirement for maintaining records for auditing purposes. Our chief consulted with the Kennewai County Sheriff's Department and determined adequate records to meet the auditing requirements have been in place for years. The agreement is necessary to continue the uh, service of the police department's ability to check driver's license, vehicle registration, or perform criminal history checks and submittal of accident reports to the state of Minnesota. Following some discussion, a motion is made, seconded it passed, and I will introduce the motion that we approve the Joint Powers Agreement and authorize the Mayor and City Administrator to execute it on behalf of the City. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the Joint Powers Agreement and authorize the Mayor and City Administrator to execute it on behalf of the City. Discussion. Roll call. Council Member Dockin? Aye. Baggerly? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Six ayes, zero <coughs> noes. Our next item had to do with uh, considering acceptance of a donation to the police department. Um, once again, our police ch chief presented a request to accept $750 from the Divine House in honor of a Wilmer police officer performing su successful CPR on a Divine House resident. Um, it is a request that the money be used to purchase a bulletproof vest. After some discussion, a motion is made, seconded and passed for the following, and I will introduce the resolution to accept the donation of $750 to be placed in the police department's budget for purchasing a bulletproof vest and to acknowledge its receipt by letter to them. Second. second. <coughs> a motion has been made and seconded to accept the donation of $750 to be placed in the police department's budget for purchasing a bulletproof vest and acknowledge its receipt by letter. Discussion. Councilman Amon. Somebody tell me who the officer was that saved this person's life. It was Officer Jason Hay. I believe you were introduced to him earlier this year when I did the annual report. Uh, he was one of the individuals in the front row. Well done. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call. Council Member Fagerly? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Six ayes, zero noes. Item number nine had to do with considering a change order number six to project 0813-D3. This project is a southern interceptor from the uh, BNSF Railroad to 5th Street Southeast and existing treatment plant treatment facility, which was substantially complete in uh, June 2010. The uh, settlements and agreements have been recently completed between the landowners and the city, including conditions that involve lowering selected manholes. Uh, the work will be com complemented by the uh, current 
excuse me, the work will be completed by the current contractor at no cost for the release of no additional claims, warranty, and repairs related to this contract. It uh, is Donahue's recommendation to accept a zero cost change order. <coughs> Sounds good. A motion was made, seconded, and passed for the following, and I will introduce the resolution to approve the work associated with change order number six for project 0813-D3 and authorize the city administrator to execute on behalf of our city. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the work associated with change order number six for project number 0813-D3 and authorize the city administrator to execute on behalf of the city. Discussion. Councilman Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was just wondering why this is a resolution, not a motion. There's no money involved. Is it just? All change orders re are required to be done by resolution. Okay. Thank you. Learn something every day. Is there discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Council Member Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Baggerly? Aye. Six eyes, zero no's. That motion carries. Item number 10. Uh, consider change order number three to project 0814-D4, uh, which is the southern interceptor force main and outfall from the new WW2F to BNSF Railroad, which was substantially complete in June of 2010 also. The settlements and agreements have been recently completed between the landowners and the city, including conditions that involve lowering some selected manholes. The, uh, this work will be completed by the current contractor again at no cost for the release of no additional claims, warranty and repairs related to this contract. Again, Donahue is recommending a zero cost change order. Motion is made, seconded to pass for the following, and I will introduce the resolution that we approve the work associated with change order number three for project 0814-D4 and authorize the city administrator to execute it on behalf of our city. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the work associated with change order number three for project number 0814-D4 and authorize the city administrator to execute on behalf of the city. Discussion. Roll call. Council Member Anderson? Aye. Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Baggerly? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Six ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. Item number 11, another consideration of direct purchase for project number 0812-C. The budget for this project includes $26,000 for direct purchases relating to the new WWTF. Three additional uh, items have been identified for direct purchase and requested at this time. The first being uh, roof access to six buildings with exterior ladders, which is necessary for safety and ease of maintenance. That cost would not exceed $46,000. Number two was water conditioning equi equipment that is necessary for a reduction of iron to prevent further staining of glassware, lab equi equipment, etc., at an additional equipment cost of $7,950. That's $7,950. And thirdly, an above ground storage tank biosolids transfer valve, which would allow for the transfer of biosolids from one above ground storage tank to another. The purchase and installation cost for that transfer valve is. $5,892. Currently, there is $9,456.01 available for direct purchases. Uh, Donahue and our city staff are recommending that $50,386,000 be transferred to cover the cost of the additional purchases. After some discussion, a motion was made, seconded to pass for the following. And I will introduce the resolution that we authorize the direct purchases for project 0812-C in the amount of $59,842, transfer $50,386 from other services to other charges, and authorize the city administrator to execute it on behalf of our city. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to authorize the direct purchases for Project 0812-C in the amount of $59,842. Transfer $50,386 from other services to other charges and authorize the city administrator <coughs> to execute on behalf of the city. Discussion. Councilman Uh Just a question. As far as the access to the buildings, uh, what was the reasoning for it? 
Um, can anybody explain why well, we need ladders to get to the top of those buildings? Are, are there for the um, <coughs> of the air conditioning handling units on the primary maintenance? Or primary well, it's to um, get to the top of the tanks for maintenance issues. What has to be maintained? We have, uh, pardon? What has to be maintained up there? I'm just curious. Well, you might have to help me out here. What? Yeah what's going on up there. But I wanted to point out that the ladders were in the original design of the project and there was a point where uh, we we went back and um, made a, a whole host of cuts in order to hold the cost down as best we could. And that was so amazing. now we're, we're wanting to put that back into the project. Thanks. Thank you, Mick. And Mayor, Council Members, it's accessing the roofs where the um, uh, heating units are and all of that, getting up there safe and, and, and those things that are on the roof. The tanks we also have to have access to, but this is more for the uh, heating system and cooling the, the, system. The, thank you, Rhonda. The reason for my question is like, I'm sure you're during the design phase that you would have understood with all the experience you've had that we need to have these ladders. So I was just questioning that. And I was indirectly, I was going to come over to you. So I'm glad you came up here. And well, I'll let you know. Staff, as they did the value engineering and reduced the cost, they looked at maybe could have a lift or that to get them up there and then move from building to building. But basically with the parapet and stuff and the new um, codes that for getting up and over and the parapets are higher than what the scissor lift could reach, that it's really not cost effective to use a lift. Safety issue. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Baggerly? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Six eyes, zero no's. That motion carries. Item number 12 was to consider change order number 8 to uh, project 0812-C. During startup and decommissioning of the new wastewater treatment facility, there were uh, items discovered that required corrective action. Modifications to one industrial blower sheave were previously made to decrease airflow in the industrial selector, contributing to $15,000 in energy savings per year. Uh, changes to a second industrial blower sheave are now being recommended to further decrease airflow, resulting in additional savings. The cost for this is $1,398.20. Modifications to the control sampler to control with a spare dry contact from each of the PLCs rather than using an analog signal. Thickened waste activated sludge changes to display, to display and control pounds usage for each ball thickener, belt thickener at a cost of $2,992.50. The combined changes result in an increase of $4,390.70. And I will uh, move the, the resolution to approve the work associated with the change order number eight and authorize the city administrator to execute it on behalf of our city. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the work associated with change order number eight for project number 0812-C and authorize the city administrator to execute on behalf of the city. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Baggerly. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Six ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. Item number 13 was a revision to construction engineering services contract with uh, Donahue and Associates. The contract for engineering services with Donahue is under consideration for vision to include the addition of the air permit assessment, additional printing costs for PDFs, and AutoCAD files for all projects within the program, and adjustments to task contract amounts and the, extent, and the extension of the contract date for purposes of finalizing the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency final certification of the operations and maintenance manual. That was all one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Could that have been a little easier? Wow. The air permit assessment ensures that our new plant complies with the state and federal permitting regulations for an amount of uh, $17,490. The cost to prepare the air permit application is $1,650 for a total cost of $19,140. Our city has requested additional printing of the project records, drawings, PDFs, and AutoCAD files 
for an additional cost of $5,552.50. These combined increased, these combined will increase the contract by $24,692.50. It was staff's recommendation to uh, revise the contract with Donahue and reallocate the budget to reflect the costs. Um, after some discussion, a discussion, motion is made, seconded it passed for the following, and I will introduce the resolution to revise the engineering services agreement and the budget allocations among the four construction phase tasks to reflect the cost of the air assessment agreement, printing, and the change of work provided, and to extend the contract date from September 1, 2011 to November 30th of this year. Second. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to revise the engineering services agreement and extend the contract date from September 1st, 2011 to November 30th uh, of 2011. Any discussion? Comment. Why are we paying $5,550.50 after we spent $80 million on this plant to get duplication of what we should already have already? Am, am I right or wrong on that? Well, we have, as part of the contract, uh, a couple sets of drawings, what we're asking for are additional um, hard copies and then the PDFs and the AutoCADs. That wasn't included in the cost of Donahue to no. perform those? Usually when you build something for somebody, you give them all the specs and the data. And Which we have, but we're looking for additional copies and uh, additional ways of storing and keeping the information. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Dockin? Aye. Baggerly? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Amon? No. Johnson? Aye. Five ayes, one no. That motion carries. Our last item, number 14, consideration of a lease with Pioneer Land Library. Our city administrator presented a consent to lease to be signed by the city as joint owner acknowledging the lease agreement between Pioneer Land Library System and Kandyvai County for a term of five years with a 3% cost of living adjustment rent increase each year. Upon review of the lease, a motion was made, seconded and passed for the following, and I will introduce the resolution to authorize the mayor and city administrator to sign the consent to lease. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to authorize the mayor and the city administrator to sign the consent to lease. Discussion. Roll call. Councilmember Fagerly? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Six ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. There was no further business that came before the committee, so if there are no questions, I would move to file these minutes. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the uh, Public Work Safety Committee report for June 14th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Councilman Christensen, I might add that there are people here that can do CPR if you're in need. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, with that, we will move into the uh, Community Development Committee report for June 16th. Councilman Dockin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, community, de community Development met on Thursday, June 16th. Uh, the full uh, members were there. Others present were Mayor Frank Yanish and uh, Laura Becker. Item number one was public comments. There were no public comments. Item number two. Uh, dealt with the ongoing cleanup within our city, and it is a motion. The committee continued their discussion of a future community cleanup effort. Chair Dockin mentioned he was contacted by <coughs> Jenna Hillenbrand of Q102 regarding a cleanup effort they were planning. They had led such an effort three years ago, focusing on recycling. The committee discussed how to partner with the radio station in conducting a joint cleanup effort to add garbage waste collection to the program. Following discussion, the motion was made, seconded, and passed for the following. 
to direct staff to coordinate a community cleanup effort with Jenna Hillenbrand of Q102. Make that motion. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to direct the staff to coordinate a community cleanup effort with Jenna Hillenbrand of Q102. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Item number three, commercial property maintenance, and it's also a motion. The committee continued their discussion of a possible ordinance to deal with exterior maintenance of commercial property. Staff followed up on the previous directive given by the council and recommended separating the commercial exterior maintenance ordinance from any fire inspection efforts. <coughs> Staff offered a draft offered to draft an ordinance for exterior maintenance of commercial buildings. The committee discussed the pros and cons of having exterior commercial inspection standards separate from the fire code standards. Staff said it had, had to do primarily with the responsibility placed upon inspection staff by the fire code in citing and enforcing any and all violations noted in the course of inspections. It was suggested that, fire, that the fire chief provide more information relative to fire code authority and inspection programs at a future public works public safety committee meeting. Following discussion, a motion was made, by, uh, made uh, and seconded and passed for the following to direct staff to prepare a draft ordinance for exterior maintenance of commercial structures and to bring it back to the committee for discussion. And I'll make that motion. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to direct staff to prepare an, an ordinance uh, for the exterior maintenance of commercial structures and to bring it back to the committee for discussion. Uh, is there any discussion? Councilman Tigerly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So what is the issue with commercial property that we need an ordinance? I'm going to let uh, Mr. Peterson speak to that. Mayor Yanish, Council Member Fagerly, members of the Council. Uh, the city currently has an exterior maintenance ordinance for residential structures that is very basic. It, it uh, deals with basic upkeep and maintenance of the exterior of the structures broken glass, uh, deteriorating siding, concrete, um, brick, any masonry issues, and we would propose doing the same thing for commercial structures because we're starting to see a lot more deterioration in our commercial buildings. Okay, so how is our ordinance working with the residential? Uh, it's something that we don't have to deal with a lot. I think it, it's it's played itself out. We had a number of structures we dealt with initially, and those have been fixed up. Um, as we get complaints, we do invis investigate them, but the terms of the ordinance are such that uh, the house has to be in pretty tough shape in order to be in violation. So they are very basic standards. Personally, driving around town, I could probably find 100 homes that need some exterior maintenance correction. Well, in the past, the council's position has been that it should be enforced on a complaint basis. We do not go out and actively look for these types of violations. So the commercial will be the same way on a complaint basis? It's, it's up to the council. Okay. Any further Councilman Christensen? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had the same concerns, uh, Rick, at, at the meeting. and. Um, my, my comment was, I, I think most of this is common sense stuff. You know, if bricks are falling off your building, you should fix it. If your win window's broken, you know, you should fix it. But um, like is true across the whole country, the, the common sense is lacking in a lot of places these days. And, and uh, the committee decided we need to uh, um, see if we couldn't have an ordinance similar to the, the residential one to... Uh, maybe get some things moving on this. But uh, I, I personally do think it's just, it's just common sense. And if, if you're going to be proud of your commercial business, you know, you're going to keep it in shape. But, uh, and I hate to, as a government, be telling people what to do because I don't like to be told what to do by the government. But uh, 
sometimes it's necessary. Any further discussion? Councilman Dockin? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think uh, for me it was an issue of health and safety and that there are a number of downtown building structures that are uh, basically empty and uh, I am personally concerned with the safety and welfare of people that would be in and around those buildings and I, I fully support this. Any further discussion? I might add and, and ask Mr. Peterson, this is just uh, directions to draft an ordinance and then it comes back to the committee for discussion. Am I right on that? That's correct. I would expect sometime within the next month or so staff will come back to the c committee with a draft ordinance. If there's no further discussion, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Uh, item number 416, bed mental health facility for information only. The committee discussed a meeting held earlier in the week to hear about changes in the 16 bed mental health facility on Southeast Olena Avenue. Care at the facility has changed from acute lockdown care to subacute care with privileges to leave the facility. The change in use was not communicated between the city or area residents. State representatives have indicated that efforts will be made to improve communication. It was noted that the facility may see another change in use in the near future depending upon the outcome of, state, of the state budget. The current facility could be closed and the facility could be reopened as, as an adolescent lockdown unit caring for the people currently at the Wilmer Regional Treatment Center. An amendment to the current conditional use permit is on hold pending the anticipated change in use. Item number five, pa parking ramp study, and this is a motion. The committee discussed the proposal by the Wilmer Design Center to hire a consultant to do a parking ramp study to include feasibility, location options, and financing options. The current proposal is for Rice Memorial Hospital to fund one half of the study cost, with the EDC funding the other one half. Committee members noted opposition to that idea by their constituents. It was mentioned that the county office relocation has reduced parking demand in the central business district. A council member, council member Amon ad, advocated uh, planning for a future ramp but asked for private sector financial involvement in the process. It was a consensus of the committee that it would be worthwhile to have an understanding of the parking demand and needs in the central business district, but they were unconvinced that a full-blown full ramp study was warranted at this time. Mariani stated that he was opposed to the study because there was no demonstrated uh, demand. The cost of the study was too high, and it is all public monies being used to fund the study. Following uh, the discussion, a motion was made, seconded, and passed for the following. Uh, the recommendation is that the city convey to the EDC Operations Board that a parking ramp study not be conducted with only public monies. And I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Second. A motion has been made and seconded uh, to convey to the EDC Operations Board that a parking ramp study not be conducted with only public monies. Discussion? Councilman Anderson? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that's a little bit vague to me when, when we say not be conducted with only public monies. Well, what are we, what are we asking? Should it be a 50-50 or or it just seems a little bit vague. I mean, if, if 1% came public or private, I mean, then is it, does it meet our criteria? My question to the mayor was going to be, I understood that 
should not be only, it was with any. That's how I understood it, the motion. So I, I, I don't know if it needs to be amended or what, yeah. but that, that you word only was not in the motion at the committee meeting. We didn't want to use any public monies for that uh, and I, study. If I may interject and, and say that the cost of this, finding out whether we needed a parking ramp was $30,000. That's just to find out whether we want one or need one. And uh, my opposition to this would be using, as you stated, any public money. Was there another question down there? Did you, did you have a question? No. Oh, Councilman Doctor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, that's uh, my understanding, too, that we were going to just use uh, private dollars to uh, do this study and not, I agree with you, uh, Dennis, that it's vague. We need to amend that. Can we change Well, the motion should be amended. Well, I'll move that we uh, amend the motion by striking only and replacing with any. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to strike the word any and replace it with I'm sorry. Would you state that again? Strike the word only. And Strike replace the word it, only. And replace it with any. And replace it with any. All those in favor, say aye. Question. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, go on the on the amendment. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Call well, I, I just want to also comment that what we're we're saying is that we're not going to be opposed to this in the future, but it isn't defined in the recommendation. So if we do this, we should say not at this time. Also, unless that's the indication or consensus, this is saying that we're never going to spend a dime on the study. But then again, I think it would be foolish for us not to say that it might not be needed in the future. So I would like to think that maybe at this time it could be added very simply. Discussion? Councilor Christian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As I recall at that meeting, we discussed this same thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, somebody discussed uh, putting it at this time at the end of it, and we, we decided not to. And the motion was made just like we had amended it here. Do you, don't you recall that, Steve? We, uh, I don't recall that. We didn't mean it here, right? I, I'm I recall, we, we, well, we can back and listen to the tape, but I recall that coming up, and we were stating we just don't want to do it. That was my recollection. <laughs> Any further comments? Okay, now I've forgotten where we were. <laughs> Voting on the amended motion. Okay, uh, we vote. Okay, amendment. and we've already read that. Uh, so, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. No. Uh, that motion carries. Now the original motion. That was an amendment. Okay. That the city convey to the ECC, EDC operations board that a parking ramp study not be conducted with any public monies. Uh, discussion. Councilor Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a question. Whatever happened to the plans of a parking ramp from the old studies that were done? <laughs> <laughs> where the dental office was and where the other clinic is, and the old mills property? We would probably have that information archived. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, we did talk about that at the committee meeting, and uh, uh, I think that we were going to get that information. I know exactly where to look for it, um, and if the EDC and the Design Center wish to have access to those files, they're free to come to City Hall and research that information. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, there's other things we discussed that might maybe clear up some of the discussion or should be maybe said too, and that we discussed the need of the parking situation now, and we had, we had an individual in the audience, Laura, who made a comment that in the last 10 years of her working downtown that she's only had two days of a 10 years where she could not find a parking space in Block 50, close as close to her uh, uh, place as possible. 
also it was brought up the uh, since the study was done back in 89 I believe the um, parking uh, well the people of the county has moved out of the downtown uh, the area downtown which about the courthouse and there's also future speculation by Mr. Christensen that we're not sure what's going to happen with the law uh, or the court system right now because the county is in the process or has been in the process of discussion to move that out into the uh, uh, Health and Human Services building. So that's going to have an impact too. We also saw the expansion of Rice Memorial Hospital's uh, parking to the south by family practice. <laughs> so th there's, there's, um, the need hasn't been shown right now for um, a, a, a parking ramp to be built immediately. But I, I did do want to convey that there's always that process and that job that we have as a council is to look at, at different things as they come up and to never uh, turn the faucet off completely. And I, I hope that we're not going to send a strong message to the people that are trying to stimulate the downtown that we're dead on the water dead on the issue, but uh, I just think right now uh, there doesn't seem to be that demand. I think that's what the committee discussed. just wanted to summarize that, Mr. Thank you, Thank you. Thompson. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, with that, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Item number six updates uh, for information only. Staff informed the committee that, de that the deed grant had been fully executed for the construction of the Mid-Central Research and Outreach Center at Minwest Technology Campus. Also that several new businesses have recently located on the campus. Number two, the status of the former airport terminal architects report was conveyed. Three. The committee discussed several recent Planning Commission matters, including a new dental clinic on 19th Avenue, strip center development near the Walmart, Lulu Beans expansion, and the upcoming public meeting and Planning Commission hearing to discuss and consider a trails and pedestrian plan. Item number seven, airport terminal study, and this is a motion. The committee discussed the recently completed architect study of the former airport terminal complex. The high cost of making repairs to the terminal building for several different potential uses was noted. It was a consensus of the committee that the level of investment required to rehab the structure could not be justified given the high cost that would need to be passed on to, the, to a buyer or tenant for the building when completed as the rehab costs far exceed the market value. Staff told the committee that they had been working on a position statement for the FAA and the SHPO. It is the city's responsibility to draft a position statement for the most reasonable and prudent use of the complex and to use that as the basis of the argument regar regarding the future use of the site. Staff had met earlier and had prepared such a proposal. It was suggested that the city's position be that the terminal and paved ramp area should be demolished in their entirety. Secondly, the city would propose that the rice hangar be rehabilitated Within the rehabilitation hangar, a <coughs> historical display could be developed, recognizing the Rice family contribution to aviation, as well as the history of the former airport. It was suggested that this be done in conjunction with the County Historical Society and the Preservation Alliance of Minnesota. The proposal would also include preservation and maintenance of the former signal beacon, as well as the maintenance of an area for parking and access to the former rice hangar. Staff noted that this action would require a replat of the larger lot to separate the rice hangar from the marketable industrial uh, land. Following discussion, the motion was made, seconded, and passed for the following. 
to direct staff to carry the reasonable and prudent position statement to the FAA and SHPO on behalf of the council. And I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to direct the staff to carry the reasonable and prudent position statement to the FAA and SHPO on behalf of the council. Discussion. Councilman Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This seems like a really reasonable request. My question would be, are we going to be able to sell that property and, and to the use that it's being used now, or, or are we going to have to start over on selling that particular parcel? Are you referring to the airport terminal parcel? Yes. Uh, it would be my suggestion that we continue ahead with the development of that site or the redevelopment of that site for industrial purposes. Okay, so the, the person that has the uh, purchase agreement on that now right, doesn't necessarily have to purchase it if we make these changes. Well, the purchase agreement has been voided. Well, they have yeah, but wasn't there something that, that, that they... They have an option. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so they, um, they've they simply requested, uh, for all intents and purposes, a right of first refusal on either this property as the situation plays out or on the adjacent lot to the west. Okay. Well, as I said, I think this is an awfully good compromise, and I, I hope that those folks will hear us. Further discussion? I might just add that this is being presented to the FAA and SHPO tomorrow morning, and uh, pray for us. We'll keep you posted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. That motion carries. Item 8, uh, West Wind Police Activity for Information Only. Mary Yanish reported on a conversation he had had with Chief Wifels regarding police calls to the West Wind development. The number of calls was reviewed and it was noted that the number was considerably less than the number of calls for service in the mobile home, home parks. Uh, item number nine, water ski team use of Foot Lake for information only. Council member DeBleek asked to have representatives of the Little Crow ski team appear at the June 30th meeting to discuss rumors of ski team use of Foot Lake. Staff was asked to try to make contact with representatives of the team and request their attendance. Uh, unless there are further things to come before this committee, I would uh, move uh, that you, uh, we file these minutes, Mr. Mayor. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the Community Development Committee report for June 16th. Uh, discussion? Mr. Mayor, I, on, on this water ski team use, maybe I can provide a little insight. I know that they they had talked about doing that, but I think they are not going to do anything until they've had a meeting with the DNR. So they may not be able to uh, to give you any any information. I think that uh, you need to let them do their homework, and then they were planning to talk to the city council if they had gotten some sort of approval from the DNR. Councilman Anderson, should we take this off of the uh, agenda then for the next community development? Well, I, I think just so that the staff realizes that, you know, it may not be uh, June 30th if they haven't met with DNR yet. Any further discussion? Or I guess there isn't a motion. No, there I made a motion to, unless there was further information to file okay. these minutes, but do we need to remove it from that, that item? No, I don't think We're so. We're very much aware of okay. what's happening there, and if they're not ready to come in, then we won't put it on the agenda. Okay. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. I'm sorry, Councilman Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, with regards to number eight, Westman Police Activity, um, I know that you wanted the comparison between the um, uh, Regency East and West versus West Winds, because there's less calls there, it doesn't diminish the importance of the number and the increased number of calls out there. I mean, it's probably 10 or 20 fold what we had prior to that 
development being there. So uh, that stated, um, it's still important that the number of calls have been increased dramatically out there. Uh, the comment from the chief? No, we've talked about it. Uh, a motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the uh, community development meeting. Uh, report for June 16th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Uh, we move into item number 13, Holly, with the uh, consideration of a bid for project number 1103. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, the project in 1103, which is the frost boil repairs in various locations throughout the city. Bids were opened on Thursday, June 16th. We received two bids, one from Dunnick and one from Munson. And it is staff's recommendation to award the bid to the low bidder, Munson, for an amount of $314,460. So moved. Second. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to adapt the resolution authorizing the mayor and the city administrator to enter into an agreement on behalf of the city with uh, Munson's for the uh, street repair. Discussion? Roll call. Council Member Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Dockin? Aye. Baggerly? Aye. Six ayes, zero noes. That motion carries. Uh, item number 14, we need to reschedule the council meeting for uh, July, from July 4th, which is the Monday, to July 5th. Uh, do I hear a motion for that? So moved. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to reschedule the council meeting from July 4th, Monday, to Tuesday, July 5th. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Uh, under miscellany, uh, Councilman Amon. Oh, committee meeting dates, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry, announcement of the council meeting committee dates. I missed that. I'm sorry. Um, and we'll go to the Dennis uh, Anderson Finance Committee. Uh, at this time, Mr. Mayor, the Finance Committee is not planning to meet, uh, barring something strange coming out of the state maybe or something else. We may have to call a meeting, but uh, we would be notified. So at this time, no meeting. Okay, no meeting for finance committee. Uh, public works. Uh, there will be one Tuesday, June. I don't have my calendar in front of me. 28th. June 28th, 4:45. At uh, number two, or number yeah, one conference two. room number when? Two. one. That's right. Don't know my way around City Hall yet. And the community development committee report. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the community development will meet the 30th of uh, June at 445 uh, Council Room Number 1. Okay. Uh, I have... Mr. Mayor? I'm sorry. Community Ed is meeting this Friday at 1130 at Jefferson School since it was canceled. Community Ed. And Rec. Ed. Okay. And I was, I'm sorry, tell me again the date and time. Right, this Friday, 11.30 at Jefferson School. Okay. Thank you. I have a couple of uh, announcements, if I may. Uh, the Chief uh, Mark Calvin asked me to announce that uh, Wilmer Fest Pancake and Sausage Feed is going to be uh, happening this Saturday from 7 o'clock to 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, uh, I understand that it's best to get there early, otherwise there's a long waiting line. So uh, it's a Wilmer Fest activity. Uh, where do the proceeds go? Do you know where the proceeds go? Uh, they go to <coughs> Proceeds go to support various events that the fire department does, such as the story time event, um, the fire victims fund, fire prevention materials, and a number of other programs that we do offer through the fire department. Thank you very and much. And then the, some of those funds are also used uh, for benefit of the firefighters themselves on some of the projects that they do as well. Thank you. 
And Councilman Reese, who is not here, asked me to uh, announce that he is in a musical, and that's the reason why he is not here tonight, uh, because he is uh, doing their first dress rehearsal. And uh, if you want to see a councilman sing and dance, I would recommend that you go <laughs> to this uh, musical with uh, Councilman Reese in there. This is at the First Covenant Church, and it is this weekend as well for the, as a Wilmer Fest, uh, but also on Sunday at 2. So if you want to go and see a councilman sing and dance, you can do that. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? One thing, Miss. I'm sorry. Oh, I just, uh, I had a, an invitation um, to um, attend a function um, at Harvest Community Church by the pastor there to witness uh, what's going on in our community. I just wanted to say uh, hats off to the members of the church. They are distributing uh, free food to approximately, their highest number is 300 and approximately 80 or 90 families every Saturday. And it's open to the public, and it's uh, free food, uh, no questions asked in status or income. And um, they have volunteers that serve in the community, and the food comes from Minneapolis, from a 501c3 corporation. And uh, it's a positive note. I just thought I'd bring it up and say uh, hats off to the people at the church and the volunteers, and uh, it just makes for a better community. And also the people were not just from the city of Wilmer. They are from all over the entire county. All, a lot of the cities. Um, anyway, I just wanted to mention that it was a Thank you very much. positive thing. As long as we're giving uh, compliments, I do need to give <laughs> one to our public service department, our public works department. Holly, I, I called at 2.30 one afternoon and mentioned to her that there was a uh, stop sign that could not be seen on Wilmer Avenue because of brush, and by the end of that day it was, uh, was taken care of. So thank you, Holly. Do we have? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just want to remind everybody to get out and uh, enjoy the Wilmer Fest this entire week. Um, we'll be culminated by a parade on Saturday, which will feature none other, than, none other than our city administrator and his lovely wife in the front car. So we'll come on out and enjoy the event. Okay. Now we'll hear a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. We are adjourned. Thank you.